Hi guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and it has been a long time coming but I finally got some deep cool products in. I know a lot of you have been asking me about testing their AIOs and it is coming but today we have the new Assassin Air Cooler and the AK620 Digital. These are both twin tower, twin fan coolers. The digital model here basically has a little screen uh, and some RGB on the top of its twin towers and is cooled by two 120 millimeter fans that spin up to 1700 RPM. The uh, Assassin um, is a twin tower cooler. There is a 140 millimeter fan in the middle which you do need to uh, remove for fitting to be fair you have to remove the other one as well um, but it does have a funky layout and a very confusing fan which I will talk to you about in a minute because I don't want you to get confused that fan there is an exhaust despite the lack of frame it is a reverse bladed fan so uh, when you fit it you do have to be careful and don't worry I made the mistake as well and uh, it was in the manual i did the man thing and just fitted it the way that i thought it should be with this side being the exhaust and all the fans blowing through but just to make matters more confusing uh, that is an exhaust fan but the fan in the middle is normally routed so you have the frame on one like basically the frames face each other so it is confusing which is why i'm stressing to you guys uh, make sure you fit it the right way round because performance will be drastically reduced if you don't. Believe me, I know I ended up testing it like it first. Anyway, this one has a 140 millimeter fan in the middle and a 120 millimeter fan on the outside that is uh, reverse bladed. It does keep things nice and clean and I do want to show you what it's like all fitted and the options for extra fans and stuff. Ah. Before we do that, I should say this one comes in at around £85 at scan, and this one is kicking in around the £100 mark. Now we will go to look at them. So here we are with the digital fitted, and I'll show you the uh, screen lit up. Uh, the screen itself uh, is relatively dark. If you put it behind a tinted window on your case, I don't think you're going to be able to see it very well at all. Uh, and the things that you can actually put up there are extremely limited. It is just temperatures. There's no way for you to put uh, messages or uh, images or anything on there. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure about that yet, but we'll cover that in the conclusion. Back to the actual test rig. Now, this is the USB cable. Now, in the Helios itself, uh, I would normally drop the cable down the back of the board just to keep things clean uh, but it's when we get to the the bottom this cable isn't quite long enough uh, now if i route it out the side of the case and then it means cabling is more visible um, like you can kind of see it at the top so it's not entirely clean. And the, the only way that I can put the cable back through is to come through the side here with it, down the bottom. So we come through down here. Now I've managed to get it caught on some of the solder points. So I have to come through down the side here. As you can see, it's not immensely long um, and I think this cable could have done with being because like I'm trying to explain okay so I want this cable to come out down here come out with a nice little right angle and then so that I can put everything tidy at the top but if it's tidy at the top and I don't like that I don't call that tidy but if it's tidy at the top then it's not down here at the bottom. And if I pull this down and try and make this a bit tidier, effectively, I'm just, I, the cable just needs to be that little bit longer. It doesn't allow for larger cases. Um, or if they don't want to make that cable longer, have a little extension cable. I'm going to suggest 
for anyone at home that you're going to want to buy an extension cable because the other side of it is if you pull all these cables tight so it fits nice it's then you're very limited with the space that you've got for this because it's all one cable so if we pull this up to move things out of the way it then pulls all the cables inside the other side of it is if you then need to pull the cable back through you actually have to push it all back through to be able to get it on now the magnetic side of it is lovely uh, I like the little accents with the lighting that's very nice the display I am uh, a bit mixed about in reality the only thing that I am saying really needs work is the length of this cable itself uh, and I think the more that I use it the more it ends up frustrating me you can get though little uh, USB male to female so it's an internal USB male to female adapter extension cable whatever you want to call it uh, I would say that most people are going to want that or if you do get issues you can get USB hubs uh, the likes of NZXT make them uh, and that would make the placement of this a bit easier but if you did put your USB hub in the bottom underneath the motherboard tray this isn't even going to fit hence me saying I think they needed to have had either a longer cable or an adapter. So just for visual clarification this is the correct way round to mount it. You need to have the little um, fan speed thing at the top right, the open end of the fan this side and then the fixed fitted fan on this side. I know it looks wrong, I thought so too, but this is the correct way, it's a reverse bladed fan. Um, it also does mean that you get a lot of clearance for tall memory modules. With this board we wouldn't have any issues having really long memory at all fitted, but you can add an extra fan on the edge if you wanted, which would mean you would need uh, shallower memory. Um, and then, just to make things even more confusing, the middle fan is normally caged so yeah anyway so the, the main reason why i wanted to show you it in or fitted was to give you a very blatant reason why but also this is the uh fan controller cable i'm going to say i don't think this brings anything to the table for me other than extra clutter um you could have just included a twin fan adapter that you could have fitted if you wanted but to add this in and add to all the extra cable clutter up here at the top, I think it's a bit unnecessary. It's just not very pretty. I don't think it brings anything to the table. Um, and like I said, I think it just overcomplicates things. And this is such a simplistic, clean design that this sort of thing, um, I think, detracts from what is a very nice cooler and we need to be thinking about tidy cabling and stuff with something that looks so pretty you do not want cables hanging out all over the place and there isn't really anywhere to fit them either because when you think about motherboard heat sinks for the MOSFETs and stuff like that you've got the towers for the uh, actual heat pipes uh, there in the way it's this just nowhere really to put them and then that means that they're messy um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that part. So on to performance and I need to stand out the way so that I can show you the graph and we'll have to move the graph, but there is a range of results because we do a range of testing. We do a 600 RPM, absolutely unfair result, which is the higher results in the graph. But to be fair, the, like I said, there is a good range. We may have to split this single graph out into RPM soon or I should just change the test rig. Uh, then we do 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM, and then whatever the maximum speed is of the units themselves. Now I will say at maximum RPM, they weren't as loud as you'd expect. Uh, a lot of people say to me, why don't you do sound tests? Well, I don't have a room ever quiet enough to be able to do it. And because you also have case fans on while it's uh, running, it would then also be unfair because uh, it would pick up all kinds of extra other noise. And if I'm completely honest, when I was testing these, I was actually doing three other jobs at the same time. Because it's just, me oh, the cat's meowing, you wouldn't have heard it on the mic. 
so as I was saying, we uh, do a range of tests. The critical thing to remember with these is their air coolers and that there's a lot of AIOs in my graphs because that's just what people have wanted to be sending. We haven't really had any half decent air coolers like big air coolers for a long time. At least not down the bottom of the graph where the assassins ended up. But the critical thing that I do want to draw attention to is they've both beat the NHD15. The Assassin itself beats the NHD15 at a lower uh, fan RPM. If you have a look, the Assassin was at 1000, the NHD15 was at max, which was 1400 RPM. But when you turn the fan speeds up with this one, you can see that it does end up mixing with some really decent coolers down at the bottom. The other side of it in reality is that I do want to stress is that the NHD15 was tested in a climately controlled room. And by that, I mean it would have been in the summer, so I had the aircon on. Whereas this, it was 20 degrees anyway. So I didn't bother turning the aircon on. So it already had a uh, higher ambient temperature. And that's why when you take the ambient away from the maximum speed, you end up with a lower delta. And it's the delta that we always try and pay attention to because it um, allows for differences in room temperatures. <clears throat> now I'm gonna kind of move into a conclusion now because you can see the graphs. Don't forget you can go and have a look at the website if you do want to pick them apart um, in more detail. I know a lot of people say about them being too small, but we can't have that many um, results in a graph and then be bigger because we just don't have enough pixel real estate. Uh, I'm going to say though, with the digital, if I'm completely honest, you're going to have to really, really want that screen to pay the extra money for it, and I'm, because they do one without it. Uh, and if I'm completely honest, I think I'd probably prefer it without it because I don't like the USB cable. I don't like the fact it then adds in the RGB uh, cable as well. Uh, and I, I don't, it just, it, it wasn't doing it for me. It, it ended up frustrating me. Once I got past the uh, reverse blade thing, which I have advised uh, Deep Cool that maybe they need to put a big sticker on this saying this is the exhaust fan or something, uh, for um, maybe people that might mistake it like I did. I fit it in haste. It could be exactly the same for someone at home that is fitting it because they're excited to get it in and get it tested. Uh, both th things that I'll say about both these coolers, I do not rate the thermal paste that it came with. I ended up running uh, Noctua NTH2 on both of these, and it took about four or five degrees. It was, the paste on this one was worse. It was much thicker and gloopy and horrible. And then this paste was very, very wet and thin. Uh, you can tell they're not the same thermal paste at all. Uh, but both of them, once I uh, remounted with the Noctua paste, the temperatures dropped even further, and they were the results I gave you today. So what I'm telling you is don't use the paste that come in the box, or at least if you have any other stuff, use that. You will get better performance. I didn't personally like it. This performance was on point, despite, like I said, the fact with uh, the confusion. I'm going to go as far as to say with the fan speed thing, I don't think it brings anything to the table other than cable clutter, and it's unnecessary cable clutter as well. I don't like it. If you're going to do something like this, at least have it so that uh, the cables, these ones, are tighter, so it's easier for things to fit in. Um, I think that side of it, the, the finer details with this could have been better. It was just like that with the cable. It's like they, they look very, very nice, but then the smaller details kind of let the side down and that was very much where I was with this. But the thing to drive home is this actually does perform really, really well, like annoyingly well. It's a hundred pound air cooler. Sorry, it's an 85 pound air cooler. So it's not cheap, but it performs way, way better than it should. And they genuinely deserve a pat on the back for that as well, because they've done wonders with it. This I will uh, happily give the OC3D Performance Award because like I said, for an air cooler, this one does really, really well. This one, not gonna give this one an award. Uh, the screen, like I said, 
with the cable that was annoying i think the implementation could have been thought out and done better um, there's nothing particularly wrong with it uh, it's just not going to be the one if you were to say to me would you tell your friend to go and buy that tom and this wouldn't be something that i would be telling any of you to buy and if i was asked should i buy this and it looked like someone wanted to buy a deep cool product i'd actually tell them just go and buy the assassin instead because it performs so much better it's cheaper and uh, there are ways that in reality you could cut the cable off for the fan controller and make it tidier as well so a mixed bag of results for my first deep cool review uh, I've gone in hard because I have been very critical about parts, but I think I need to, I think I should be, and uh, they definitely need to get used to the fact that I am never going to like oodles and oodles of cables when a few small changes could have made very large difference. It's just good that this one really, really does perform well. <laughs>